good all the things hi how are you i am katie brannon and this is tea time true crime with katie um if it's your first time here hello if you're fascinated uh by true crime or kind of the dark side but with good vibes definitely hit uh the subscribe button like share all the good things hit the bell for the notifications awesome so uh tonight's crime is going to be very different because a lot of it is allegedly and don't worry you guys i don't want to see in the comments below saying like why are you going to take a maybe a good man down this guy ain't a good man okay he's actually a very big creep in hollywood yeah we thought weinstein was bad this this guy i will call him um ryan schminger yes um, yeah, he's been a creep for like 30 years, but his creepiness and how he affected child actors is the reason why I'm talking about this amazing actor that was taken way too soon. If you are wondering who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Brad Renfro. Brad Renfro, um, he was born July 25th, 1982. Yeah, so I went on a deep dive, you guys, and I went to a rabbit hole of I, I shouldn't have. I actually wasn't going to do this story, um, but I woke up like with Brad still on my mind. Even though I watched something on YouTube of this famous medium that contacted Brad, and whether you believe or not, I will definitely link the description below. She contacted Brad and talked about his children and the abuse he endured and kept giving her symbols. But um, nonetheless, I cannot get him off my mind. And I feel his case is like minuscule of what has been happening in Hollywood. So right off the bat, he is um, a Leo sun. He is a Libra moon and a rising Pisces. Um, that is his birth chart. So yeah, I went really, really in depth with um, Brad Renfro. So I'm gonna call out my uh, Biffle here. So Biffle means best friend slash waffle. So Biffle, yeah, who likes waffles? I feel like everyone. Anyway, we watched that in high school, a famous movie that he's in called Bully. And Bully came out in 2001, and I will definitely talk way more about that fiasco. But I remember us watching it, and not that we were, like, scarred about the movie, but it, it really, I don't want to say traumatized us, but the acting was so crazy and intense. It's a very gritty, intense film. So Biffle, I don't know what we were thinking about. Um, we were some dark teenagers. That's, that's all I got to say. Um, but um, when I watched Bully, I was like entranced by Brad Renfro. I'm like, who is this? He had like these kind of James Dean looks. He had this grungy grittiness to him. And then when I looked him up, I was like, I got to figure out, like, he had to be more than what people portray him. Now, I think the main reason why I'm doing his story, because he is known as just a drug addict, a heroin addict, and no one gave a shit about him. Like, okay, half of that is true. He wasn't even in the remembrance, like, montage at the Oscars. I know. Yeah, it's... Yeah, I will get into that. It's it's insane. But Brad Renfro had this gritty look and he was plucked from Knoxville, Tennessee from a trailer park. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying what happened. Now he had a really rough start. His parents divorced really young. Okay, no big deal, right? Big deal is though, the mother left her son with the grandmother Mm hmm and she went to go marry some dude and just like like cut off her son like they may have had some kind of relationship but the beginning of his abandonment issues definitely started from that like what a heartless woman like you just leave your kid like nah I don't want to be a mom anymore hey you take care of him I'm gonna go and have another family or have a love and yeah so that's pretty tough and actually, um, Brad started getting into drugs, alcohol, marijuana at a very young age. So a policeman 
uh, slash dare officer. I don't know how he found this information out, but there was a movie being filmed directed by Joel Schumacher called The Client. And he is like really young. And the policeman dare officer actually contacted the uh, production and was like, you need to have this kid, Brad Renfro, audition for you. As soon as they saw him, like this kid had no acting experience whatsoever he just looked like a tough kid like he was like um 10 years old 12 years old just smoking a cigarette just looking like a like a badass like a rebel you know and you know <sighs> joel picked him and he was in the movie in fact the lead in that movie it did not say who it was but he was immediately fired when brad was first looked at which I find fascinating because I was like, Brad has no acting skills whatsoever. You're about to do this big movie. I mean, it was a big movie at the time. It came out in 1994, okay? And it was Susan Sarandon, Tommy Lee Jones, like some big heavy hitters, you know? As I said, uh, Brad had it kind of rough. I mean, he did have a rough. He was raised by his grandmother. He actually smoked pot um, at nine years old and he got drunk first at 11 years old. He was expelled from school at 12 for, you know, light, lighting up a doobie. Yeah, we're just gonna say doobie, but lighting up a joint in front of um, a school official. Yeah, that guy, he had balls that kid, huh, didn't he? So, you know, balls of steel, bronze of steel. So, the dysfunctionality, the, you know, we don't know what happened in the trailer park, but when the empath was talking to him and reaching out to him, you can believe what you want to believe, but he apparently was touched when he was a child, you know, uh, very inappropriately, not like a hug, but not good either. You know what I'm saying? It's not, not, not a hug. If you, if you get my drift, um, he actually starts using heroin at age 12 and he starts having sex, um, they say consensual sex, but I beg to differ, um, at age 13. He started seeing, like, his first sexual partner was with, like, an older woman. I know. I know you're thinking what I'm thinking, right? Like, mommy issues, abandonment issues. So he found solace, you know, like, solace in an older woman to make him feel complete. I, I don't know, filling some kind of void. Um, but apparently in my research, Edward, Edward uh, Furlong, not Norton, sorry, Edward Furlong, who was in, um, you know, Terminator 2, and he was in some Crow movies, but of course I'll always know him in American History X. One of those films, y'all, that will just stay with you, and you're probably like, whoa, Katie, you watched that movie? Yes, I did. And Edward Norton became one of my favorite actors because I could not believe how he was in the beginning of the movie and how his legacy was trying to change at the end. But that's a whole different thing. It was a low budget, insane, gritty film. And Edward Furlong played the brother. So I bring him up because same thing with Edward Furlong. When he was 14, he began having sex with a tw his 27-year-old tutor. So, yeah. The client role, apparently, I don't know if he was fired, but it said that the client was supposed to go to Macaulay Culkin. I don't know if I can imagine Macaulay Culkin in that role. Um, if you are not sure what the client was about, it was a kid who witnesses a judge's, like, you know, unalived himself, okay? And before the judge, you know, unalives himself, he confesses, knowing a lot of the secrets um, of the New Orleans, of a New Orleans mob, pretty much. So it's like a mafia, and he's like a witness. So Tommy Lee Jones wants this kid to confess and be a rat. But your acting debut. And I must say that it's an absolutely marvelous performance. Congratulations to you. Well, thanks. Um, you got to feel all kinds of mixed emotions about this, don't you? 
Well, no, you know, I'm just a normal person like you. You know, I don't feel like I'm some kind of big star. You know, I had a really nice experience on the client, but I don't feel like I'm some kind of, you know, you, know, you want to know how much this shirt costs, you know. <laughs> It's all the same, you know. Joel Schumacher said that when he was trying to cast your role, Mark, that he just set out to look for a tough kid. Are you a tough kid? To an extent, you know. Getting fights or what? I used to, you know, getting fights. But, uh, you know. After so many fights, you don't have to get in fights. You know, you've got a reputation, which is seems cool at the time, but it's not good. You know, which is why, you know, this movie, you know, you know, changed my life a lot. And even though this kid's like 12 years old, he's like, I don't want to tell you crap. Like, I don't want to say what's what's happening. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want to be a rat, especially since the mafia. So the lawyer, Susan Sarandon, plays like the lawyer in the film and she's like a mother figure. Um, yeah, it's a great movie. It's very moving. Uh, he has this awesome Southern accent, which I find out is not even acting. He's from Knoxville, Tennessee. So he had a really nice Southern draw, you know, like real country. It was adorable. Um, but what happened to him in the later years, even now, it's not adorable at all. I forgot to do a warning, you guys. I'm so sorry. I am horrible. Warning, 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 okay? I'm about to talk about some, um, you know, just not nice things. I'm talking about sexual assault. I'm talking about um, inappropriateness with a minor. I'm talking about um, not receiving any justice. Yeah. This podcast is going to be a bummer. And I'm sorry that you guys are floating with me in the water because right now I'm just floating because I have gone down a rabbit hole of so many directors and their creepazoids. And I just, yeah. But I do want to talk about the Schmeager guy. Yeah. So we're going to go on and we're going to talk about Brian's neck. Excuse me. Oh, <laughs> Oh, damn. Okay, I got it. I got you, Brad. Sorry. I feel like Brad's energy is in here right now. <laughs> you wanted me to, like, blurt that out. Wow, I am, like, red. Holy crap. All right, Brad. Here I go, Brad. I hope you approve, man. Okay, so the next movie he did, and he's just a kid. Brad Renfro, you know, was only, like, 12 years old when he did The Client, you know? So this, his next movie is called The Cure. Now I've not seen it and it's nothing like the band. I know, don't get excited. I was excited too. But it's basically about where he befriends a kid that is dying of AIDS. And they talk about a wild summer together. That sounds really depressing. I don't know if I could watch that. I don't know. I've watched so many things recently with Brad, like my brain is just like, none of this was acting. This is absolutely terrible. Like Hollywood literally ate him and spit him out and didn't even like recognize him for anything. Like I just, I, what? What? Okay, sorry. I'm, I'm like going way too much above. I'm gonna have a sip of tea here. Apple cinnamon. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. So the next movie um, that he is known for and my partner really, really likes, he's like, I've watched that so many times. I was like, really? The more you know. So was Tom and Huck. I remember Engine Joe giving me nightmares because it's this dude trying to hunt down these kids. Um, it was not received by critics very well at all but Tom and Huck is basically from the novel from Mark Twain you know Tom and Huckleberry Finn so you had Jonathan Taylor Thomas and you had um Brad Renfro as the leads so they were actually it was filmed in Alabama Alabama and um 
when it was filled in Alabama, there were tornadoes. It was very rainy. There were mosquitoes. It was like not comfortable. Like I just heard something from Jonathan Taylor Thomas, like an interview from like another podcaster where he just had a horrible time shooting. So yeah. Well, the next filmography, um, also if I skip anything, please link down below. I know he did like Deuces Wild. <clears throat> I know he did a few more things, but let me know down, let me know down the comments. I'm just going to do the movies that I really remember him in, if that's cool. I hope so. Okay. So the next movie that Brad played was Brad Pitt's younger character in the movie In the Sleepers. Woo! Yeah, have you guys seen that movie? Oh my gosh, I did a... Well, now I can call it a true uh, crime mini video about the White House boys. And definitely check it out. It is on my channel. And man, that was that was a tough week looking up that. And those kids still never got all the justice. Um, but basically, The Sleepers is about these kids that go to like a juvenile prison and they get like molested, SA, just it's, it's tough. It's, it's a tough movie. It's, it's a tough watch, and Kevin Bacon plays an absolute scumbag. Like, Nightmare. Kevin Bacon is a great actor. I'm a big Kevin Bacon fan. He did one movie with Christian Slater in 1995 called Murder in the First. If you want to cry for two and a half hours, watch it. It was a true story, actually. But Kevin Bacon, actually, um, it, it was him, actually, as a prisoner and the torture that he endured. Gary Oldman is in it. Oh yeah, it is It is intense. It's actually where he met his wife, Kira Cedric, where she played a sex worker. Sex work, yeah, whatever, I blew it. Um, so yeah, so he was a scumbag in Sleepers, but he had an amazing role in Murder in the First. If you can stomach it, it is a true crime drama but it dealt with the mistreatment in prison and you know Kevin Bacon's character is mentally um not there he's slow um he did something very tiny like minuscule I think he stole like something very tiny like a food or something because he was starving and he got so many years in prison it was unbelievable but yeah definitely watch the movie it was great but you will you'll cry okay so after you know the sleepers which it's very scary it's like foreshadowing his life legit it's horrible he plays in the movie apt pupil now um schminger okay is it is where a southern california teen discovers his neighbor is a former nazi war criminal yeah Nazi war criminal. It's actually a book by Stephen King. It's a novella, I should say. And um, the kid, you know, Brad Renfro's character, threatens authorities, I mean, threatens the, you know, Nazi war criminal um, that he's going to tell on him, you know, tell the authorities. So he makes, like, the Nazi war criminal, like, you know, he blackmails him and makes him do all this weird stuff. Um, that he committed in World War II. Not do the things, but he had to like talk about the atrocities. It's a very dark film. Uh, if you want to watch it, it's actually on YouTube for free. So you're welcome. But me personally, even as older as I am, I couldn't finish the film. There is one part, spoiler alert, I don't know if it happens, don't tell me, but even the harming of animals, I, I can't, I cannot do. Like if I see a harming of like a child or an animal, I, I just get really, really upset. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And there is this cat and an oven. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. And I just, even, even if it didn't happen, I, I don't know. But when the guy like opened the oven and had the cat in his arm, I'm like, nah, I'm done. But, um... Yeah, apparently Brad Renfro's character and the war criminal, they get in some kind of like cahoots. 
you know, and Brad becomes very manipulated and, and becomes a manipulator. It just seems like a wild, just sick to your stomach kind of ride, you know? When he was filming Apt Pupil, Brad Renfro could have been like 14, 15 years old at the time. And he had a relationship with Schminger. Uh, sources say that he was his boyfriend. Yeah, and that's okay. You're in your uh, 30s and you're okay. So the thing I find really weird is usually like, you know, we watch Euphoria and everything like that now. Um, and we watch messed up things, which I say Euphoria is like a R Riverdale. <laughs> boop, boop. Sorry, um, I make fun of myself, don't mind me. Riverdale is like, I don't know, it's like, turn X or something, but the actors are in their 20s, okay? Well, this movie, Apt Pupil, teenagers, you know, usually movies want to be safe, especially if there's nude scenes in the movie, that they want to make sure that they are over the age of 18 and they're not minors. But the boys in this movie, that there's a scene, that there's a shower, and they're minors. They're like... 14 to 17 years old. Yeah. So like I, so as I was saying, usually movie people want to hire 18 or older. I totally get that. But Schminger, no. He, he, he hired younger to play older parts. Not that much older. But Brad was 14 and his role he's playing is 17. Yeah, he's like 14, 15 playing on like 17. So there was a lot of scenes that were questionable and but the one major, major scene I was going to talk about it was a shower scene. Mhm. Mm yeah, there I mean I saw a little bit of it uh cuz I was like watching little like okay, is it really that bad? And I was like, "Oh my god, it's that bad." Basically, you have little boys. Honestly, they're they're like like I said 14 to 17. And they're, they were bullied on set, allegedly, to take off, you know, their clothes. Even though it was a shower scene, um, the kids just thought, I'm in a towel, I have a t-shirt on, that's fine. But when they went on set, they're like, no, you have to take all of them off. And the kids are like, uh, but they're like, okay, well, we have a flesh-colored G-string that you're gonna put over yourself, that you cover yourself. Well, allegedly, Schminger, okay, Schminger and the production company bullied these kids into taking it off, even the flesh-colored G-string. I'm sorry. Now, you're wondering, Where's the proof, Katie? Where's the proof? Oh, this is from a court deposition right here. Five plaintiffs, ages 14 to 17, they were bullied to strip down for the shower scene to be fully naked. And the defense was saying, oh, it was a mistake. We meant the adult extras to be fully naked. I'm, I'm sorry, what? There's no, like, adults in the scene. What the hell are you talking about? One of the kids were taken off set by Schminger and was like, Hey, how are you? You're really good looking. I've got a Ferrari. First of all, what? you got a Ferrari? These are boys. Why do they care about that? Like, what? According to the court deposition, many times he would fondle, fondle me, grab my genitals, and start masturbating them. And then he would rub his front part on me, and he did this all with a smile. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm 
sorry, I don't know if I'm like queuing into Brad right now and um, no charges were ever filed. And if you're wondering, you know, why Schminger already had the untouchable, he directed one of my favorite movies, Unusual Suspects, starring Kevin Spacey. And we all know what accusations he's been through, even though I got an email saying all charges were dropped of Kevin Spacey. So, uh, no good things were going on that set, you guys. Probably no good. This kid, Andy, not his real name, said that one night him and Schminger were fooling around on a bed. And Brad was there with no shirt on and was kind of going with the flow. Before Andy and Brian started having sex, Brad left. He, Brad at this time was not even an older teen and he's already been around drugs, sex, mansions, promises of mansions. Yeah, if you guys listen and open your heart and listen to Sonia Bello, I believe her name. She is a Canadian medium um, who contacts the other side and even talks to, um, you know, like deceased celebrities, famous people. It's fascinating. Um, but it's very, it's very sad because, you know, he's based, she, is getting a reading basically saying that he was tossed around. Oh man, I'm sorry. But again, that's allegedly, I'll, I will put the link on the description. Let me know what you think. Believe what you want to believe. But I do believe that even though Brad was kind of like a pain in the butt when he was a kid, got into shenanigans, he didn't have boundaries. He clearly didn't have strong parental figures in his life. Now, in a blind item, that's what we're saying now, apparently on TikTok, in a blind item, a rumor was that uh, Schminger took Brad to a Hollywood party and he was the only minor there. Schminger supplied Brad with so much booze that he didn't even remember what went on in that party. Brad, I'm so sorry. Oh man, I'm sorry. Uh, there is a documentary, it's on YouTube, but they pulled it down a few times. I know they're going to pull it down again. I think not because it's crap. It's because it is leaking, um, you know, truth from Hollywood. It's literally about trafficking Hollywood and the young boys. Um, I watched a tiny bit of it and then I realized like I'm losing time. I need to film this podcast. I need to I didn't finish it. I, I watched so much today, the past few days, like my brain can't handle it. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm only human. These boys needed help and no one helped them. No one gave a shit. They only cared about the money. And that is so sad. That is so sad. And I didn't expect to go down this rabbit hole I'm talking about one of my favorite actors. The documentary is called Open Secret Documentary. And uh, it, it was going way back. Like they were talking about different strokes 
you know what I'm saying? Like that, that famous sitcom. And apparently it gives way more and they just touch on a schminger. But there's other creepers. So um, Apt Pupil did, was not received by critics at all, uh, but it remains some kind of cult classic because it's Stephen King and the acting is so like upsetting, bizarre, disturbing. Like I said, I, I couldn't finish it. Um, but I'm thinking, was it just a playground for Schminger? Did he even care? In 2001, uh, this is where we're going to get to the movie Bully, okay? Um, we're not talking about the 2016 Bully, okay? We're talking about the 2001 Larry Clark film called Bully. Larry Clark also directed Kids, another disturbing film. Yeah, like Larry Clark, I had no idea he was, this dude was in like his 50s. He was old as mess, just filming teenagers and like doing drugs, having sexual relations. Um, even though it's acting, it's still teenagers. It's still like your kids. We literally are watching kids. I know, hence the movie Kids, but it's, it's rough, but not as rough and graphic as Bully. Bully is very gritty. It's a hard to watch movie. It is intense. It is. Um, now, Larry Clark said that his movies are the secret world to what kids were up to. Okay. Um, Larry Clark also found like amazing actresses that are acting still today. Um, he found Rosario Dawson, she was in Kids, uh, Chloe Savini, um, I'm gonna talk more in a moment, um, I just can't like think right now. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. So that, 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 that was, those are the main ones on Kids. So we're gonna talk about Bully though. So Bully, uh, Larry Clark said when he drove um, to Knoxville, Tennessee, because he lived in Knoxville, Tennessee, he lived home until uh, 2001, he moved to Los Angeles, Brad Renfro. So Larry really, when he saw him in The Client and Apt Pupil and the movie The Cure, um, Larry Clark really wanted him in, his, in this movie. Now, um, you know, for him to audition. Now this movie, even though it's a big indie movie, uh, it was a great film, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I, I could not stop. Like, a lot of, I mean, there were some parts I, I looked away because, like, you saw, like, you saw. You know what I'm saying? There's no imagination. There's no budget for this movie. So, one of the main reasons I'm a really big indie, like, that is my favorite genre, avant-garde kind of films, is that they don't have the budget. So, they have to purely act on their craft, art, storytelling, I find that fascinating. So when Larry was picking up um, Brad, when he opened the door of the trailer park, Brad's both arms were like, just blood was drawn down both arms, like just blood fell because he was, um, you know, doped up. He was uh, shooting up cocaine in his arms. So Larry just knew he was an addict, but really wanted him in his movie. And yeah. So the movie Bully is actually a true story. I know. It's a true crime story. Um, if you guys want me to do it for one of my podcasts, let me know down in the comments below. Make the long story short, a group of friends has this one friend in the group that is like a total, just a poop. You know what I'm saying? Like a total shit bag. Let's just say that. And he's just a bully, like horrible to his friends. So the rest of the friends have a plan to kill him. Yeah. But the movie Bully is really gritty, really hardcore. Um, they show like everything. Like Bijou Phillips, you see... Bijou Phillips. Yeah, and if you're wondering, Danny Masterson's wife? Yeah. Yes. So, the movie Bully involves drugs, 
Um, you know, the kids were apparently not even sober during filming, like the, like the teenagers. Um, there was a few people that were like sober, other people weren't, but the people who starred in the movie was Bijou Phillips, Brad Renfro, Rachel Miner. Rachel Miner was Macaulay Culkin's wife at the time. Nick Stahl, Michael Pitt, Daniel Francis, Kelly Garner, Leo Fitzpatrick. All star indie cast. Yes. I just, I, I, I couldn't, I can't believe it. The movies, both, um, Kits and, um, yeah, the movie Kits and Bully had an NC-17 rating. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, I always forget to mute my computer when people send me messages. I apologize. So, yeah, this movie involved sex, um, SA, drugs, murder, I mean... His, his movies are just like gritty and raw. Let's just say that. Like back in the 90s, it just, and early 2000s, Larry did not look like a really wholesome kind of dude. You know what I'm saying? But Bully is one of those films that will stay with you. There was a lot of weird sexual dynamics in the film. There's a lot of nude scenes with women and, you know, as men as well. So... Yeah, I remember watching it, you guys, and I'm like, holy, are they really having sex? Is that a, is that really her, oh wow, they're showing everything. Now, um, Rachel Miner actually had an interview in a magazine, and she says something really nice about Brad when she was filming with him. She said, Brad was a light of a human being. He had his own battles and that was painful to him and painful to all of us around. But I don't want that to color what people take away because he was also this incredibly empathetic, genuine, creative, really bright person that showed up with his whole heart all the time. He has a huge heart and he really brought it to whatever he did. I think there's something to be said about our society and hopefully we're improving, but it can be a really rough world. For him to be that empathetic and sensitive and to feel that much, I think a lot of us have different coping mechanisms, some of which are healthy and some of which aren't. I think that as an artist, what I saw the most was how much he cared. He was really passionate and that showed through. Yeah, I thought that was really sweet. So, Daniel Franzies, if I'm saying it wrong, forgive me, but I love Daniel Franzies. You guys probably know him as um, the, the friend from Mean Girls, yes, who played alongside Liz Lizzie Kaplan, mm -hmm. the one that was like, quote, too gay to function, yes. Bully was his first film. And again, that was kind of obscure too, where someone just saw him at a store and picked him out of nowhere. I know, to be in Bully. So I like Daniel. Um, I think he's very talented, and I cannot believe that was him in Bully. Because like I said, when you watched a long time ago, you don't put the two and two together. I think me and my Biffle did though. I think we watched Mean Girls, we're like, hey, wasn't he in Bully? <laughs> you know? Um, but apparently he had a horrible time filming. It was just a horrible experience. Um, I don't mean to name drop, but that's all I'm doing in this podcast. So I guess here you go. So Bijou Phillips. Now, not only is Danny Masterson's wife, okay? I don't think they're together anymore since, you know, his, his guilty of like, you know, essay and horrible things covered up by Scientology so long, 30 plus years, but we're going back to 2001, Bijou Phillips um, was from the Papa John Phillips family, who was from the Mamas and the Papas. Now, that family, whoo, oh man, that's a whole different thing. That is, that's a whole different can of worms. 
but um, Bijou and her um, older sibling, Mackenzie Phillips, yeah, yes, I know, they're related, they're sisters, 21 year difference, yeah. If you guys are wondering what I'm talking about, man, this is like sad town. This is a sad town podcast. Mackenzie Phillips started getting like essayed by her dad. So yes, we're talking about incest relationship. It gets worse. It's an It was an incest relationship for 30 years. She called it a torrid affair. Like in the beginning, she wasn't liking it. And I guess the most it did. Yeah, I know. I know. We're, we're not diving into there. We're not. No. But she came from that family, Bijou. So there was a scene in Bully, and I don't know if you guys remember. I don't know why I remember it so hard. I think because if anyone who was like a little bigger or had any body issues, this was hardcore. There's a scene where there's a pull scene, and Daniel's character had to take off his shirt uh, to go in the pool, right? Well, Bijou Phillips goes and and points at him and she goes, oh my God, you're so gross. And just bullies him. And apparently that wasn't even in the script. She was just heartless. Um, yeah. She would pick on Daniel all the time. And it was like, really really messed up um Daniel talked about on Twitter I think in like 2018 or something like that and he said he forgave her but good lord if I had all this happen to me on set like wouldn't you quit quit acting oh not only she made fun of his weight and everything like that there was there's a scene where they're in a car and she has her legs on his shoulder and he like turns his head to like hey man you know like get off me get your feet off me he didn't say it he just like did that movement, you know, like, yo, you know, she kicked him in the head. She kicked him so hard that he could have had a concussion. I know, she sounds very friendly. She sounds like a nice person. The bullying was so bad, Michael Pitt and Brad Renfro would stand up for Daniel when Bijou was literally bullying him on set. So, you know, Brad takes him to the side and says, you know, you know, you're a good guy, a great actor, and don't listen to her. Aww. It was just a whole bunch of bully on set because Brad turned around and said not nice things to Bijou. Like when she didn't get a bit, when, when she got a bad take, he'd be like, can we get another actress in here? Or something like that. No, can we get a real actress in here? Yeah, so of course, you know, two wrongs don't make a right. Um... But Bijou also like twisted uh, Daniel's nipples and like and poked fun at his belly and just made fun of him and uh, was extremely made homophobic re remarks to him like screaming are you gay are you gay like over and over again and then like he would be like I'm bi and then the next day are you bi are you bi are you bi just really annoying bullying behavior. Now you're probably thinking, well, why didn't Larry David, I mean, Larry David, whoa, totally different people. Why didn't Larry Clark kick her off? Well, so Bijou was like a club girl, a party girl. And she was a teenager at this time as well. I know it's disgusting. We like see her naked and all her bits and stuff. Um, because she's literally a kid. She's under 18. I swear she's like only 16 in that movie. 15, 16? Yeah. So she basically got the whole movie financed for her being Bijou Phillips. Yeah. I know. Bijou at that time was like the, the club girl scene and, and everything like that. So she uh, didn't have a really nice reputation in Hollywood. And again, we, we don't know. We, we don't know, guys. I mean, I'm just telling you what I read. Um, could it be true? Who knows? But she was a heroin user as well. So she probably was supplying Brad with heroin on the set of Bully. I mean, it's like, makes sense, right? Um, but Bijou was known to like, like sleep around like when she first talked to Larry Clark he said that she went right on his lap took the cigarette out of his mouth and put it in her mouth yeah so 
she just doesn't seem like a very nice person, you know, doing that and bullying and just making people feel horrible. Yeah. So during the filming of Bully, Brad Renfro is arrested. Yeah, he hung out with some coke people, got really messed up on coke, and tried to steal a yacht. And he almost got away with it because... Um, but he didn't because he forgot to untie the boat. So he was caught. I know. Yeah, they had to stop filming for like a day to get him out. Yeah, he was a bad boy. So he was arrested with cocaine. Um, he would have that in a cigarette box. He would have a bag of marijuana. And, you know, he was with his cousin. This is like later... Yeah, this is where he gets like in so much trouble. It seems like every time he's messed up, he does horrible things. Like someone should stop him or get him help, you know? But as I read, they, they tried. Um, but I don't know, did they really? Because the Schminger guy is making more movies and making more money and hurting more boys and just paying people to put under the rug or making them go away. So yeah, I don't think anyone helped him. He went to rehab twice by the time he was 19. And he, after the movie Bully, he was in one of my favorite movies called Ghost World. Ghost World starring Scarlett Johansson, Thora Birch, Steve Buscemi, and Brad Renfro. Um, in 2003, um, if you guys haven't seen that, it's it's good. I, I It's dark, it's weird, it's kooky, it's an indie film. Um, but again, they're like all teenagers in the movie. So, yeah. So in 2003, Brad actually became a father. Now it is not known that he knew he was a father. I feel like he did with this one. Um, and his son is named Yamato Renfro, and the mother actually ended up back uh, to Japan. So when Brad passed away, um, the mother went back to Japan. In 2005, Brad was arrested driving with suspended license, a DUI, and also the same year he was charged with possession of heroin. Now, what, but what freaks me out is that you have all these Hollywood bigwigs that have coke and heroin like delivered to the set, allegedly, okay, and you have poor Brad Renfro like burning every bridge or whatever. So he, he is hooked and he has to go to Skid Row to buy his heroin and that's how he got caught by the police. Now, I think that Brad didn't really know how to set boundaries. I mean, think about it. He had like no parental, you know, supervision. I mean, I'm sorry, but his grandmother could do what she could, but there was no real father figure. And the one who was a real father figure had kind of like a warped sense, like Schminger. Because when I see him in interviews, Brad's like really happy with him and and everything like that. But then when I hear about the boys that were in those parties that Schminger would, um, you know, the hot tub parties. Yeah, there's pictures online. It's it's creepy. It is creepalicious. I just, ugh, ugh. Um, these are young boys and no one is doing anything about it. And I feel like everyone knew in Hollywood. They were like, yeah, Schminger just made an Oscar movie. Um, he's making millions doing the, the Marvel superhero movies. He can do whatever the hell he wants. I mean, I don't know it's what they said, but it, I mean, doesn't it seem like that? Like money just buys everything. Money does not buy everything, especially trauma. Because Brad Renfro was up like big time. So he didn't really have anyone to watch him. You know, Brad's relationships just weren't the best. And, you know, and his father just dipped out. Wasn't even like a caregiver. He was like a factory worker. You know, a very low-income family. But that shouldn't matter. It doesn't matter what you come from, how much money you have. Love is priceless. 
You can love someone and not have a million dollars in the bank. You could just be there for them, talk to them. Um, I also read interviews that Brad was had this neediness about him on set. Like he really didn't want to be alone. And I find that so, so sad. And unfortunately, with drugs in Hollywood, you're not alone. And you know, you get, you get very popular in movies and then you start to meet more creeps, but then you don't know what to do because you can't even like look at yourself anymore. You know? Yeah. When, when I saw that last interview, yeah, the last interview, if you guys want to, I will put it at the end of this podcast. Um, I'm sorry about the techno music. I don't know why there's techno music, but I'll put it at the end of this podcast and I will show you. Uh, but it was his last um, interview. In 2007, he also was in that movie uh, called The Jacket with, I believe, Adrian Brody's in it, Kira Knightley. It's like a psychological thriller. This movie, the next one, not many people know about it, but I bought this movie. And weirdly, I honestly forgot about the movie. I was like, oh my gosh, I've seen it. It's called Tenth and Wolf. And it's starring James Marston, Giovanni Ribisi, Brad Renfro, Dennis Hopper, Pi Piper Paribu, and Val Kilmer. And many, you know, other names. And I was like, dang. Yeah. I remember it being like an old-timey kind of, like, uh, a film noir kind of movie. It definitely was under the radar. Definitely in the indie scene. He also appeared in Law and Order, Criminal Intent. Um, afterwards, he was in the movie The Informers. Yeah, The Informers. That's where I originally saw Amber Heard. Yeah, she played um, kind of like a hoe. I know, I'm not trying to be derogatory, but she kind of was her part. And she's like dying of AIDS. She's naked in the movie. Um, but it's like an all-star cast, a dark indie film. So when he was being casted in that film, Brad Renfro changed. He was like almost 24, 25 years old, and he put on some weight. You could definitely tell that he was trying to pull his life together. He was trying to get off drugs and get off heroin. So he, you know, was jokingly said to the director, um, I put down the heroin spoon and I picked up a fork. I know it's, you know, to ease the tension. He was in the movie. He had like a small part, although I don't remember him in that movie. Um, yeah. So we're going to go to January 15th, 2008. He was found dead in his L.A. home at only 25 years old. Now, when you watch the last interview, he looks like he's 35, 40 years old. That's what someone said. I think he did look older, but you got to remember this kid, you know, grew up really fast. So he played these roles that are like, I feel like we're for grownups. They were just very mentally taxing, disturbing, psychological like horror, you know? Um, now he died of a heroin overdose slash morphine intoxication. There wasn't a note. Uh, they actually think that he didn't mean to pass away. Um, he actually had an audition that day at one o'clock for a movie. I know it's sad. I think he, I, I know it's so sad. He is um, buried, he is buried in Knoxville, Tennessee. And here's like a weird note and a weird coincidence. So Brad auditioned for Heath Ledger's role in The Patriot. Great movie, right? Um, and Brad died one week before Heath Ledger in January of 2008. I know. It's weird. When Susan Sarandon heard about the nudes and about Brad's death, she wrote a tribute to him. And she also said that, you know, he reminded her of a young James Dean. He was not mentioned during the Oscars remembrance. 
you know when you watch the Oscars or, or if you do at the end of the Oscar ceremony they have this really nice kind of remembrance um, kind of part of the award show where it says in memory of so-and-so and they have their name and what they were known for in Hollywood Brad was snubbed Brad didn't even get that he didn't even get in the remembrance and the excuse is this we couldn't fit everyone really you couldn't fit everyone is it because when you look at his face you knew that Hollywood failed him is that why I know it's awful and you're wondering well Katie what's going on with Schminger well apparently there has been stuff about Schminger for 30 years I was looking up YouTube stuff from like eight years ago where they're like breaking news accusations what's gonna come of it you know kind of thing and like nothing because he has money like money 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 rich and powerful okay um, so though, here we go, one of the last movies that he has directed was Bohemian Rhapsody. Love that movie. Rami Malek, so good. And Queen is one of my all-time favorite bands. They are my hype bands, okay? I love, love Queen, okay? So he was fired apparently like a week or two weeks before production ended because he was hard to work with but between me and you you guys i'm thinking things were coming out of the woodwork i'm thinking every come on now people knew for so long and they just didn't say anything it's awful but um so the new director um, or the the studio agreed that he still got the screen credit like when you watch it It actually says directed by Schminger, you know Not that but you know who I'm talking about um, But they said that apparently it was very hard to work with and stuff like that. No, he's a creep um, His publicist let him go um, According to him and someone else he's in Israel right now yeah, and he's working on three movies and then plus a documentary about how being accused has ruined his life, like the aftermath. So we'll see if any of that goes into uh, fruition. But if you're wondering, you know, did he face any prison? No, he's not in jail. No. Even though there is so much evidence, it is sickening of how many boys like how many boys have been hurt I'm sorry I just I don't like it when people are getting hurt so bad and no one is caring they just care about the green coming so yeah that is a uh, as Brad Renfro, I appreciate you guys listening. And uh, yeah, I'm going to do the clip right now. And it is the, his last interview. Hi, I'm Brad Renfro, and you're watching Portable Hollywood. The advice I have for people who want to get into acting, numero uno, check your motives for wanting to get into it. It's a lot of work. Very few people are fortunate enough to not really have an appreciation for the craft and still make money. There's so much competition. It's really just about persistence. You gotta just keep at it. If I'm two inches too short, you know, the role probably goes to the other guy. So you have to really learn to be just secure with yourself and know that rejection is part of it. It's gonna sound silly, man, but you know, or actually, it's not. I would tell them, you know, to stay the hell away from like the, the party scene. Anything you put in front of your goal, and especially something like that, where it's too much gambling, too much food, you know, too many, too many, too much cold beers on a weekend. Anything you put in front of the prize, so to speak, is gonna, it's gonna end up getting in the way and hurting you in the end. 
unfortunately not many people are lucky enough to traverse through things like that and, and come out on the other side, you know. And a, a lot of people, they don't make it, they don't live through it. Thank you, thank you very much for listening or watching. I really appreciate you. Please know that you are loved and you are cherished. And remember, you are doing better than you think. Bye guys.